miss the comfort of this house Where we are, where we are so tonight um, we're hoping to photograph the Geminid meteor shower. Um, it's a relatively clear night, but unfortunately it's not the peak. The peak of the meteor shower is tomorrow night, um, but the weather for tomorrow looks terrible. It's going to be widespread rain and cloud. So we're going to go out tonight and we're going to see if we can capture some meteors. Um, hopefully we will. Um, yeah, a little bit of luck is involved as well as a little bit of patience. Um, but I'm hopeful that we'll get something. So when I'm out taking nighttime shots, um, I always like to include a bit of foreground interest. Um, usually this can be something like a tree or a mountain or an old castle or something like that. Um, but on this occasion, uh, we've come out to the coast um, and there isn't much here. So I've brought along with this telescope. Uh, the good thing about having this is it's relevant to the meteor shower um, and astronomy in general. And the good thing is, once you've taken the photograph with the telescope in, you can then use it to uh, look at some of the cool constellations and planets and some of deep space in the sky. Um, I'm gonna talk you through what I usually do um, when coming out and taking photographs at night time, especially with meteor showers. So you can see here that I'm really low to the ground. This isn't always necessary when shooting the stars, but because I'm using a telescope as foreground interest, um, I really want to get as much as that telescope sort of uh, above the horizon as possible. Um, something, th to, something to think about when photographing meteors is the rule of 600. You want to take 600 and divide it by the focal length of your lens. So for example, if you're shooting with a 10mm lens, that's 600 divided by 10, that's 60. Um, and that means you can shoot for 60 seconds before you start to get blurry stars. In my case, I'm using 21 millimeter lens. That's 600 divided by 20, and that's 30. So if I shoot an exposure for longer than 30 seconds, um, I'm gonna start getting blurry stars, which is not what I'm after when shooting meteors. Uh, another thing you need is patience, lots and lots of patience. Um, I've got my shutter release cable in here, clicked. Uh, in continuous mode so that my camera will just keep on firing pictures and I'll sit here for a couple of hours just firing picture after picture after picture and then if any meteors do shoot across the sky um, I'm almost certain to capture one and that's what I'm looking for that's what I'm waiting for so I'll sit here and I'll get a cup of tea and I'll just wait and I'll, I'll just watch the stars and watch the sky Okay, so I've just seen a meteor shoot across the sky. Um, I've got to be honest, it's been fairly quiet tonight, so I'm really excited um, that I've been lucky enough to get this. I haven't checked my images, so I don't know if I've captured it. I'm pretty sure that where it was, um, it's going to be in my frame. Um, so I'll check that and have a look. Um, if you want more information about uh, shooting meteors um, and, and any advice, um, I'll stick a link to my blog in the description. I'm going to check that picture. Can you check?